In this video, we're going to learn about exponents of 1, exponents of 0, negative exponents, and negative bases. First up is exponents of 1. The rule for exponents of 1 is actually quite simple. Any number to the exponent of 1 is just the number itself. So in this case, we have x to the exponent 1, which equals x. So if we have 3 to the exponent 1, that's just going to be 3. And if we have 17 to the exponent 1, that'll just be 17. So what if we had 3 to the exponent 4 divided by 3? Well, in this case, we do see the division of two powers. We see that the bases are the same. And so we're tempted to use a quotient rule, and it's actually correct to use the quotient rule. The only problem is, what would we do? You're supposed to subtract the exponents, and the exponent for this one over here is missing. Well, we just learned that 3 to the exponent 1 is equal to 3. Therefore, what we have is 3 to the exponent 4 divided by 3 to the exponent 1. Of course, that is the same as 3 to the exponent 4 minus 1. That will be 3 to the exponent 3. So what's really going on here is that when you have a power, so in this situation it was 3 to the exponent 4, and you divide by the base, so we divide it by 3, what you're really doing is you're dividing by 3 to the exponent 1. And, of course, after you do the quotient rule, you will realize that you have a power with an exponent that is exactly one less than what we started with. Again, we started with 3 to the exponent 4, we divided it by 3, and we get 3 to the exponent 3. So after going from 3 to the exponent 4 to 3 to the exponent 3, and how did we get there? We got there by division. Why don't we try going all the way down to 3 to the exponent 1? Basically what I'm saying is, why don't we try dividing by 3 over and over again? And before we do so, let's also write out the expanded form to see what's really happening. Okay, so this is the chart that we're going to form. We have 3 to the exponent 3, which equals 3 times 3 times 3. So we know this from learning exponents and powers and bases in the past. This is very simple. And what we learned earlier today was that when you divide a power by 3, here we have 3 to the exponent 3, when we divide that by 3, it is the same as dividing by 3 to the exponent 1, which means that we can use the quotient rule, and we get 3 to the exponent 3 minus 1, which of course is 3 to the exponent 2. Great. Now, if we are going to divide the left side by 3, since we have this equal sign here, we know that we also have to divide the right side by 3. When you have 3 times 3 times 3 divided by 3, then you know that that's going to equate to 3 times 3. So we just double check with our intuition. We have the base 3, and we have 3 being multiplied 2 times, so 3 times 3. So great, so that works out. And if you do that one more time, you'll notice that on the left side, you finally get to 3 to the exponent 1. And of course, 3 times 3 divided by 3 is just going to be 3. So this is how we get to 3 to the exponent 1 equals 3. And if you refer back to the very beginning of the video, we said that x to the exponent 1 equals x, meaning any number to the exponent 1 equals just that number. And this means that this doesn't work just for 3. It works for any other number. Let's take, I don't know, 8. Well, 8 to the exponent 2 equals 8 times 8. If you divide both sides by 8, you get 8 to the exponent 1 on the left side and 8 on the right side. So great. Now, instead of just stopping there, the way we did with the powers when the base was 3, why don't we try dividing both sides by 8 one more time? So we have 8 to the exponent 1 divided by 8. 
we now know that 8 is equal to 8 to the exponent 1. So I decide to write this as 8 to the exponent 1 divided by 8 to the exponent 1. All right. And we also know from the quotient rule that we can subtract the exponents here. So we have 8 to the exponent 1 minus 1, which of course equals 8 to the exponent 0. Aha! This is the first time we ever saw an exponent of 0. Let's find out what the right side will end up equaling. Well, what did we do on the left side again? We divided it by 8. We know that we need to divide the right side by 8 because there's an equation here. So when you do 8 divided by 8, you get 1. So 8 to the exponent 0 equals 1. And it turns out that anything to the exponent 0 will equal 1. For example, if we bring back the powers with the base of 3, we'll notice right over here that 3 to the exponent 1 equals 3. Instead of stopping there, if you divided both sides by 3 again, you would get, once again, 3 to the exponent 1 divided by 3, which we know is the same as 3 to the exponent 1. And of course, with the quotient rule, we know we can do 3 to the exponent 1 minus 1, which equals 3 to the exponent 0. So we divided the left side by 3. We are going to now divide the right side by 3. 3 divided by 3 equals 1. So 3 to the exponent 0 also equals 1. And as we said before, any number to the exponent 0 equals 1. To write this, we say x to the exponent 0 equals 1. Now there is, however, one small exception, and it is that when x is equal to 0, we don't say that 0 to the exponent 0 equals 1. Instead, we say that 0 to the exponent 0 is undefined. We will cover this in another video. But for now, it is really simple to think of it like this. Any number to the exponent 0 equals 1, with the exception of 0 to the exponent 0. Awesome! So you can see how much this chart is helping us to understand exponents. When you keep dividing both sides by 3, you eventually end up at 3 to the exponent 1, which of course we found out to be 3. And of course when we divide both sides by 3 one more time, we found out that 3 to the exponent 0 equals 1. Well, instead of stopping there, and you might know what I'm about to do here, why don't we divide both sides by 3 one more time? What do we get? We get 3 to the exponent 0 divided by 3, which of course is the same as 3 to the exponent 1. Now we use the quotient rule and we have 3 to the exponent 0 minus 1. Well, what is 3 to the exponent 0 minus 1? That's just 3 to the exponent negative 1. So wow, this is the first time we see a negative exponent. So let's find out what that negative exponent equals to. On the right side, we had 1. So what happens when we divide 1 by 3? Well, we know already that we can just write this as a fraction form. We know 1 divided by 3 is just 1 over 3. Now I want you to take a moment to look at this 1 over 3. That 3 at the bottom there, instead of writing 3, we learned today that you can actually just write 3 to the exponent 1, and that would be the same as writing 3. So let's just write it as 3 to the exponent 1 for now, and we'll get to the reason why we did that a little bit later. And bear with me, this is a little bit long, but it's the most important part of the lesson. Let us divide both sides by 3 one more time. We have 3 to the exponent negative 1 divided by 3, which is the same as 3 to the exponent 1. We know that we can do the quotient rule here. We have 3 to the exponent negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. So now we have 3 to the exponent negative 2. If we divided the left side by 3, we must then divide the right side by 3 
again. So now we have 1 over 3 to the exponent 1 divided by 3. Of course, we know that this 3 is the same as 3 to the exponent 1. And we also know that dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 3. So what we really have here is 1 over 3 to the exponent 1 multiplied by 1 over 3. Of course, I could just write that as 1 over 3 to the exponent 1. So what we have then is the numerators multiplying to equal 1 and the denominators multiplying to equal 3 to the exponent 1 times 3 to the exponent 1. Now if we use a product rule, we can just add the exponents, right? We get 3 to the exponent 2 in the denominator. Uh-huh. There seems to be a pattern. When you do 3 to the exponent negative 1, that equals 1 over 3 to the exponent 1. When you do 3 to the exponent negative 2, that equals 1 over 3 to the exponent 2. So is it actually the case that when you have a power with a negative exponent, all you have to do is literally just write 1 over that power and drop the negative exponent? Well, the answer is yes. So if we had 3 to the exponent negative 3, then we know that that would also equal 1 over 3 to the exponent 3. And if we had 3 to the exponent negative 4, we know that that would equal 1 over 3 to the exponent 4. And of course, this doesn't just work for the base of 3. This is for really any number. If you have 14 to the exponent negative 2, it will be 1 over 14 to the exponent 2. So it's almost like that power just becomes the denominator, only that you drop that negative sign where the exponent used to be. For example, if I gave you 15 to the exponent negative 7, then from what we learned today, we can write 1 over 15 to the exponent 7. Also, if I gave you 18 to the exponent negative 2, then you should be able to get 1 over 18 to the exponent 2. Reversely, if I wrote 1 over 5, then you should be able to know that 1 over 5 is equal to 1 over 5 to the exponent 1, which of course is equal to 5 to the exponent negative 1. Great! So before we finish our lesson, let's just learn one more thing, and it pertains to negative bases. When you have something like negative 5 to the exponent 2, does it equal 25 or does it equal negative 25? Well, it turns out to be the case that it equals negative 25. And the reason why is that the exponent will always apply only to what is immediately on its left. So you'll notice here that 5 is to the left of 2. Therefore, what you get is 5 times 5, and then you apply the negative sign. If instead you had a bracketed base, so in this situation you would have negative 5 bracketed to the exponent 2, then it would equal 25. So again, everything in the bracket sign is the base. You can see that the negative sign over here is included in the brackets. Therefore, what you're really doing is negative 5 times negative 5. And of course, we know that a negative number multiplied by a negative number will be a positive number. This is why negative 5 bracketed to the exponent 2 equals 25, whereas negative 5 to the exponent 2 equals negative 25. Awesome! So that video was a little bit longer than expected, but since exponents are extremely important and they will be used even in the next video, stretching all the way into university and perhaps beyond that, 
it was probably worth the while. So why don't we do just one last recap of everything that we learned. We learned about exponents of 1. When you have any number to the exponent 1, it will just be that same number. So x to the exponent 1 will equal x. We learned about exponents of 0. And what we learned is that they will always equal 1. So x to the exponent 0 equals 1. The only other exception is when x equals 0, and we will not cover y in this video. And then we learned about negative exponents. We learned that when you see a power with a negative exponent, you can express that same power as a positive exponent by simply doing 1 over, write the entire power down, and then drop the negative sign. Lastly, we learned that there's a difference between bracketing the base and not bracketing it. Of course, when you don't have any brackets, the exponent will apply only to what is immediately to the left of itself. So there you have it. You are awesome for concentrating throughout this very long video. You deserve an ice cream.